Our guest today is Brad Leone, a cook and author who rose to fame as the main man behind Bon Appetit's It's Alive series. He has a knack for fermenting foods, for bringing large dose of science into the kitchen, and he approaches cooking with a F it, anybody can do it attitude, backed by research, creativity, and obviously experimentation. When he's not cooking, Brad's happiest out hunting and fishing. Today, we talk about getting your foot in the door, the argument for trying new things, and the scariest part of spearfishing off the coast of Rhode Island. I'm Chris Burkhard. And I'm Charles Post. Let's dive in. Let's fire up the hibachi. <laughs> I want to know, as a chef, like what I've, I'm, you know, it's super funny because so many people are interested in like some, you know, fanatical workout dude, like, oh, what's their routine? But to me, I'm like, what's a chef's morning routine? Like, what is your go-to breakfast, coffee kind of like, what's that look like for you? I guess there was a lot there to unpack. I don't consider myself a chef, really. Like, I, I don't like have like a restaurant or or am I like, cooking like a service, you know, a, you know every day or, or something like that. Uh, I do get exposed to a lot of good food, and I do I have a so and I have a family and a, a very active kind of lifestyle in the outdoors as far as hunting and cooking, uh, fishing and and gardening and and shit like that. Um, so I, I guess I, if I'm lucky and I got kids, you know, I got two young boys, six and four. Um, first day of first grade for the first one for, for Griffin today. That was cool. And, um, so like it usually starts with like, if I'm lucky, I try to get some water in and then coffee and then, um, you know, and, and then, uh, and then we get the kids out, you know, try to get them out of the house, feed them. You know, I'm not a big, like, I don't need like a regimented sit down breakfast. I usually don't eat much of a breakfast. Uh, I like with some, like a decent amount of water and some coffee, Sometimes if I'm like, if I wake up hungry, I'll eat, you know, for I kind of just listen to my body. But for the most part, you know, I'll get the kids out and then, um, that's, you know, try to get them out pretty early and, uh, and then kind of get the day going from there. I feel like I just couple anybody who's involved with food as like a chef. So, <laughs> so fair enough. <laughs> and what's like it. in your mind, in your mind to be a chef, you need a restaurant. Is that kind of the criteria? I mean, for me personally, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I, if you want to call me a chef, I don't really care. But like, you know, I, I guess I just don't personally consider myself like a, a, a chef, you know, like, I don't know. Maybe it's just like my own little hang up, but like, and it's not even a hang up. Like I'm very happy about it. Um, but like, I just, yeah, I guess in, in my mind, you kind of do like, you know, whatever kind of kitchen or whatever type of thing or, or whatever type of, you know, food, tr you know what I mean? Like where you're actually cooking every day and prepping and, you know what I mean? I do that occasionally. You know, I do that at events or when I, you know, or, 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 or you know, different types of dinners and stuff like that. Um, but yeah. What, what is your relationship with food and how does that, where does that come from? Like what, what is kind of that, is it a creative inspiration or is it just like a necessity or like, yeah, I'd love to hear you define it, I guess. Yeah. I don't know if it's a, it's an inspiration. It's more, um, I mean, I grew up, kind of exposed to uh, food and gardening and, and, and cooking. Both my parents cooked at home and that was very fortunate. Uh, you know, it wasn't like the best ingredients or like all this type of stuff that I know now about food, but like the core of it, the fundamentals of it, of being cooked a homemade meal that wasn't just like, you know, McDonald's or like, you know, hot dogs and stuff, which like a lot of people like, you know, any foods, you know, better than no food, don't get me wrong. Uh, but, you know, like, you know, it was always like a little bit of like an elevated type of thing. My parents also had like expressed interest in cooking. So like, you know, that was kind of, I guess that's, I guess that's if you were to like break it down with a shrink or something, that's probably where it started. <laughs> but like, <laughs> you and know, with, and then like, yeah. Being, yeah, and then like my dad having his own dishes and my mom having his own dishes and my, both of them kind of doing gardening, but my dad kind of mostly did the vegetables and uh, and then from there it got into like hunting and fishing and that kind of translated into it. And so when you were when you were young, like was the garden, like did you look at the garden as like your farmer's market? Like you're out there just like sifting through the the backyard, seeing what's in season, seeing what's cooking. Like was that kind of like where maybe that that notion of like adventure and like the outdoors kind of came from? Like that that natural kind of pairing of the backyard and, and food. Yeah, certainly the at-home gardening aspect of it in food, and I think it's wonderful. I think it's like the probably the most approachable part that you could get involved in farming, right? Uh, and, and it's awesome, you know, especially if you grow what grows you know well in your area and what you like to eat. Uh, if you're fortunate enough to have, 
you know, land or some soil you could put it in or, you know, buckets on a, on a, you know, I lived in New York for 10 years and I always had little gardens and I was fortunate to have little outdoor kind of access and grew like tomatoes and eggplants and stuff. But, um, yeah, I mean, like having my dad grow vegetables was certainly, yeah, it was, I guess since that was inspiring for sure. So a, like food that is alive is, is essentially like one of, it seems like your passions or maybe just your expertise. Like what, what is it about that process that is, is intriguing to you or interesting to you? And Kombucha. Yeah. I mean, that's what I, it's, I think it's once you get the little nicks and the knacks and the, you know, you have to babysit it. And if you, you know, there's some critical moments that if you were to, you know, not be there, things can go not <laughs> ideally, I mean, not, not, you know, but, um, for the most part, that's a pretty safe one. Um, but you know, the, uh, the original question was like the, the fermentation. That's something I didn't get into until a bit later. I, you know, it wasn't something my parents did, or there was no like, they, they didn't do any type of fermentation or, or project, you know, food based stuff like that. Uh, uh, I got into it just you know later on working at Bon Appetit in the test kitchen and uh, just having you know some like in between time down there and a little nook to kind of start projects. And uh, cool. Yeah, that's kind of where it, where it developed. The kombucha started from a lady who was a food stylist, um, Ali Nar Nar Nardi Nardney. Sorry, Ali, I always fucked your name up. <laughs> Ali Nardney, and she gifted me a scoby with a recipe of how to feed it, and you know the ratios of it to tea and stuff. And from there, it was like, yeah, I just kind of it just snowballed a bit, and before you know it, there was a camera following me around, and and then that developed into you know a, a you know different stuff as well fermentation is one of those things that i think everybody can relate to but maybe not in like a food aspect because right everybody's open the fridge and there's just like fermentation taking place like <laughs> mold fungus oh, yeah. i mean it, it's essentially like i mean i'm an ecologist like i study nature i mean fermentation is something i see here in the forest in the arctic all the time did you was that like a calculus you guys did? We're like, hey, fermentation is a bridge that everybody has experienced in some capacity, just like life on Earth as a human. But I mean, my make brain goes there. You know, personally, I love geeking out on that kind of stuff. You know, but like, yeah, um, I you know, and we I didn't we didn't we dove a little bit into the science. I like, and to get back to the original question, I'm no uh, ex. I never consider myself an expert. I'm just like I'm really just learning. You know, I barely graduated high school. You know, there's no, you know, everything I do is like not FDA approved for the most part. You know I mean? Like for the most part, like, you know, there's, you know, there's certain things that, you know, and ratios I follow that are, you know, you know, there's certain practices that are safe when you're doing certain things, you know, there's by all, by all means, you know, there's science is very real uh, and food safety is very real. Uh, but, you know, for the most part, I do, I, I just do lacto fermented vegetables and, um, when I, you know, I, to be honest, I've been taking, I haven't, I haven't fooled around in a while. It's been, it's been a, like two years since I've done like any major big projects that, uh, um, that would be worth like, you know, publishing or something like that. You know, it's been a while and, and to looking forward to like diving back into that world as well. Where, and, then, and when you get into that world, then it's like super important as well to, you know, to, to, to fact check and, and get in and, and, and just have the right ratios that people are going to be following stuff, you know? So this is interesting because Charles, like, you know, you and I have a lot with a lot of our guests, this theme has come up, this theme of like experimentation, being willing to make mistakes. And maybe you can just talk about it a little bit of like sort of being willing to make mistakes in that environment, in the kitchen environment in order to like achieve success, you know, in some way. Yeah, for sure. I think it's just like anything. It's like all the, you know, all the crazy shit you guys probably do. I mean, you have to be able to also like adapt in the moment with it you know so like if you're cooking and something if you just you know if it needs more acid or salt like you have that intuition that you've built up this is experience and then being able to utilize it uh you know i guess that's the, you know it's that that's cooking and for me i got to be honest I, I never cook with recipes you know like i just i cook what i kind of unless it's something like crazy that like especially like over those baking stuff if you, you know i don't do much baking but like you know, if, if you're getting into that world where it's more of a chemistry and science ratio thing, but like cooking dinner and lunch and, and breakfast, you know, like that kind of stuff is, is, is just cooking, cooking from the, from the, you know, from the, from the gut and what you're listening to what you want and to eat, you know, that's the kind of the most important thing for me. I guess your approach obviously resonates with so many people because your the views on your YouTubes are like 
massive. And I mean, I know for me, when Corona started, I was uh, looking for a kombucha recipe, have definitely no background in, in food. And was just like Googling and came across all these different YouTube videos that I did not resonate with. And then I found yours, not knowing anything about you. And I was like, my wife was like, this is the one, like, this is sick. Like, this is how you, you want to well, learn. That's a perfect example of, you know, being able to make mistakes and how important it is. Cause like that entire video is a mistake, you know, like it's like, I like guess a miracle that one even worked out. Um, you know, all jokes aside, it's no. Yeah. So, I mean like that, we, we shot that, that was the first episode we ever shot. And we shot it, and it like mm -hmm. uh, it sat on a hard drive for like a year, uh, and they were just I I guess this the boss one of the Bobs saw it, and they're like we can't put this freaking thing out like this is ridiculous, and then I, I think the first time I saw it I was like this sucks guys like we can't we can't we can't do this <laughs> like you're, you're just making fun of me like I guess like it's easy I'm very like you know like, like I'm jolly but like yeah eventually we found our groove and you know uh, that one came out and it did well and then it just became this like. You know, for me, I just got one gear and it just, that's Brad. And it just kind of, you know, we, I rolled with that and it, and it worked organically. So like that, yeah, that's how that's. Yeah. I just, I love the approachability that you bring to it and the playfulness and, and that's how it should be. It should be like food is, is experimental and fun. And I, I feel like it, I don't, I guess I'd love to get your take on this, but like a lot of modern TV around cooking shows is like, it's drama. It's like drama cooking, you know, like we're watching like high stakes drama cooking where chefs are out there like cutting their fingers and stressing and like sweating into the plate. And I'm, and I, and I, it's fun <laughs> to watch. It's entertaining, but like that, it just does, there's no correlation, you know, to the average person, like who's like, Oh dude, I want to, I want to try make kombucha or I want to try this. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Like, I do feel you like think it's like two different worlds. It's like, I'm mm -hmm. glad, you know, like to each their own. There's, you know, there's a billion people that want to watch Kim Kardashian and her sisters talk about stuff. So like, if you want to watch people fight over who made the best butternut squash, like God bless all of you. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> it's just not my thing. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to do it unless you pay me like $20 million and like, <laughs> I'll do it then. I'm not going to lie. But like, <laughs> but like other than that, like, yeah, it's not really my thing. You know, like I mean, I'm sure there's fun ways to do it. And again, like tweet their own, you know, as long as you ain't hurting nobody here and, and making people, you know, angry, like, to, you know, it's harmless. So like, whatever. So I want to back up here for a second, because I've, I've read some stuff about you. I've seen videos. I know there's a whole story before Bon Appetit. Like you grew up in Northern New Jersey, you had gardens, you hunted and fished, you were outside, but, but how old, like you, you weren't a young, you weren't like 18 when you started your internship. Like how did all of the little steps and adventures and kind of segues from when you were a kid to when you got that internship prepare you for this next chapter? Yeah, oh man, well, I guess a lot happened in that like 10 year clip because I, I, I graduated high school, well, I guess you're 17, almost 18, right? Uh, and then... Uh, I went, I moved to New York to go try this culinary uh, school stint when I was 27. So in that 10 years, you know, I did, I, I went to a, I went to a community college for, uh, for like two semesters to be a cop. And I, that, that wasn't, that didn't work out. And then, <laughs> and then from there, yeah. And then from there, you know, just did a lot of like all types of different jobs, you know, like paved roads, did construction, you know, all like uh, it was a union carp, uh, union uh, glazer for a couple of years of doing like architectural aluminum glass and driving trucks around and shit. Um, yeah, so just a lot of like a lot of different jobs. A lot of I, catering, a couple of catering companies, uh, ski lift operator, you know, right in New what? Jersey by Mount. Yeah. No yeah, way. Like one of the only, yeah, one of the only uh, uh, ma uh, mountain resorts, mountain uh, in New Jersey. It's called Mountain Creek, the old action park. And uh, it's like, and I don't know what the elevation is, 19 or 2200 or something, you know, but they got like a gondola and, and, and quad chairs ripping up this thing and, uh, and people go and, you know, when it snows, don't really snow anymore. But uh, yeah, so, so you're anyway, just like, I, I, cruise... yeah, sorry. Uh, no, I was gonna say, so you're just like cruising around, like trying out all these different hats, seeing what feels good. Yeah, I kind of just being a loser, man. I get it. You know, and like. Uh, you know, and like, no, but like, you know, all jokes aside, like, just like, you know, kind of trying to find my way, man. Like, you know, I didn't know what to do. Like the, the, the you know, the school route wasn't really for it, you know, um, didn't have like the best friends at the time. I had, I had some good friends for sure, but like 
a lot of people I was hanging with in not that whole time, but in that clip, you know, were, you know, were in the bad, st- you know, bad things and kind of, you know, drugs came through that area pretty heavy and, you know, a lot of, a lot of kids died, you know, um, and it was just like not a lifestyle I wanted to be a part of. And I moved around a bit in the state and then, uh, and then eventually just moved to New York at 27, took a little loan out and I uh, moved to Brooklyn. I found an apartment on Craigslist that had like six roommates. But I had a nice backyard, and it was right off the L train in Williamsburg, Lorimer and DeVoe. And, uh, and it was great, man. It was like a converted closet. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't lay straight in the, in the bed. I had to lay sideways because it, it was like a short bed, and my feet hit, hit the fucking – it was ridiculous. <laughs> it, was, it was literally like a, a walk-in closet someone converted, but it was like 600 bucks. Price is right, you know, all, all utilities included. And then I would go to school at, during the day, and then I would work at some restaurants at night. I worked at the, uh, a place in Manhattan, then a, uh, a place in Brooklyn. Uh, and then eventually I did an internship uh, at Bon Appetit. I didn't want to do, you know, I went into this thing not wanting to be a chef, you know, like a restaurant chef, you know, where like I didn't, wasn't trying to go open a catering company and say, and learn, or say I went to culinary school or learn whatever culinary school. Um, I wanted to get into, like, not, you know, I guess ambitious and naive me wanted to like, get into, like, uh, you know, I guess more of like the food science world, or, like more of the like journalistic kind of creative part of it. Like, I, I don't know. It seemed like there was, there was such a big world, you know, food being the category outside of just uh, being, like cooking, you know, uh, like physically cooking. Uh, and I, luckily it worked out, man. I did that, I did that internship and, uh, it kind of just like I guess I you know I hit it off with everyone, um, and uh, and they offered me a job a, a position as test kitchen assistant, which was which was great, man. It was better than what I was doing. I was living in New York, you know, and um, Monday through Friday. It wasn't nights and weekends like the restaurant world, uh, you know. But it was like a glorified, you know, like uh, like. I just cleaned up and shopped and stuff and cooked and helped a little bit. And then it's, and then it just grew. And I just, that's all I wanted. I was like, get me a foot in and I can, I can grow and I can like, you know, let them, you know, hopefully, or at least I, you know, I was hoping that was all I had. So, uh, and it worked, man. So, and then, the, and then became test kitchen manager and got more involved with that and helped him run the test kitchen and cooking more and developing more. And then video kind of happened and, uh, across the, like the, like the, I feel like the food media platform, uh, and, like everyone started making like real quick kind of like hands and pans overhead kind of videos. And then, and then eventually just got a little bit longer, a little bit longer. And then like full on, uh, you know, like me ranting about fermenting soybeans. So, so Brad, you said something in an interview that really resonated with me. You were talking about how, when you were looking for a job, you, you felt like there was maybe this, uh, this, this belief that, the chefs were looking for like the best chef, looking for somebody with all the credentials, everything on paper. But you, you were saying, be nice, be curious and be positive. Like talk to us a little bit about how that mindset's uh, yeah. Like changed your life or affected your life. I forget who said it to me, some a chef, but it was like, you know, when I look for someone that I want to hire, I don't want to, I don't need them to be the best chef or know everything. I just need them to not be an asshole, you know, and have them be that someone wants to be around, you know, that I, and that wants to learn. I can, you know, and, and that kind of, that always stuck with me. And, you know, I, I heard that when I was a bit younger and, um, and it always kind of, you know, always been a little bit of a mantra for me in, in that, in that realm. So it's interesting to kind of hear you say that. Cause I think, it, I think that, you know, to see that happen in the kitchen is also awesome. And usually a lot of these, these, you know, where you're lacking skill set, that can be taught, that can be learned. It's, it's what you can't teach or learn is like kind of a selfless, um, awareness and empathy, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. It's that character. It's that, 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 that what makes up a person, you know, and, and as long as like, and again, as long as they, they've made it that far, right. So they, they have the, I'm sure they're talented and have their skill sets and they, they're in certain, certain strings need to be tuned a bit, then that's, I mean, that's life. That's life, you know? And I think I couldn't, yeah, I couldn't agree more. And then another thing that you talked about too, which I also really, really connected with was just this idea of like sticking with it. Like you talked about being up at Bon Appetit and people just kind of coming and going and you just decided that if the door was cracked, you'd stick your foot in and just hang in there. I mean, where did, 
where did that kind of like motivation that that kind of clear focus on just like you know what i'll wear whatever hat you want i'll jump as high as you want but like this is where i want to be but you well, see now is when it's i got now is when i'm getting tested the most with that you know i mean like it was like it's it happened it happened organically and on someone else's system and someone else's production and someone like you know what i mean i just kind of did my setup and my show and my creative and they recorded it and made the thing and had the whole for better or worse. There was that, that they, they was their machine, you know, like now the transition of, of, of having done that for years, having, you know, oh, it, fe it felt like a freaking, like a whole career ready. You know, we did like over a hundred episodes um, uh, of, of multi-length, you know, ep uh, videos there. And to, like, now to go out on my own and then start my own creative productions uh, and shows and host them and, and do that kind of outlet, you know, like, so like now sticking with it and working harder, I think it is like, I feel that more now than ever. What was the inspiration behind Field Notes for Food Adventure? And I guess just maybe give people a little like background story to like why, I mean, again, like you're using film, you, you, you just kind of ended on that note. All of a sudden you're making a book. Like what was the transition? Why'd you do it? Can you give us a little insight there? I thought it was always a cool idea, but I, I didn't have like a manuscript. I wasn't shopping something around, you know, because of video, things were hot. You know, people were getting approached. I got approached by, you know, a couple publishers and I, I went with one of them. And, um, you know, I said no like twice, but you know, eventually the deal made sense and they let me use, you know, whatever photographer I wanted and, and food stylist and just kind of gave me creative freedom. And, uh, and then, yeah, and then from there, I was like, all right, well, now I got to, <laughs> now I really got to make a book. And then, um, <laughs> and then came up, you know, and then came up with, you know, uh, the idea of, you know, I didn't want to just make a food. It would have been a hell of a lot easier, to be honest, but to me, just make like a food recipe. You know, I would have, the food probably would have been better, to be honest, but like, because I had, I was, I was stretch fit thing kind of doing so much, but like just a food recipe pictures of food whatever kind of and there's probably different ways to do it but whatever and you know, so i wanted to make it like where each chapter was a different location it could be a different theme and the idea is that me and my buddy pat uh one of my like first friends uh that i met in brooklyn uh really cool dude from omaha uh nebraska and uh and we became like really good buddies and he's a really cool really good photographer um so and he doesn't shoot food he shoots like He's like more of a like you know dialed in like studio still guy, and or like he can pop out in the field and get some stuff. But he's like setting up lights and shit. You know, he's you know he's a he's a school visual visual arts kind of guy. You know, uh, and that's awesome. So, but what I want, but like I can get me and Pat could like sleep in a van together if we needed to. You know, he's like really good. Yeah, he's a really good buddy of mine. We we got into surfing together, and we were always like cooking out in the woods together. Um, and like, cause he had a van, this really cool old van when we were living in Brooklyn, um, this old Dodge Ram, we call it Ramsey, this red one. And, he, <laughs> and we would drive around all over the place and like, we would like just pop into like some weird, you know, probably try, we were definitely trespassing, but we would like pop into like these weird cutoffs off of like the Delaware or, you know, up in the Catskills or out in like Long Island and just like make fires and shit and, and, and cook food and, uh. You know, or bring or hike stuff into the woods and like cook like lobsters and shit like up in by this waterfall in Pennsylvania that we like that's awesome. And like that's kind of like where not to just rant off on that cool shit, but that's kind of like where like it's ex exactly where like field notes, uh, you know, I wish we had a different title to be honest, but like that's where that book theme kind of came from. And like I'm that's where like, I'm doing it with Pat, like real kind of, you know, and his assistant Kenyon, who is like a, a rad kid. Uh, I say kid, he's like, I don't know, fucking 32 or something, <laughs> but like, but like having that like, experience to be able to like having that band where we can go and like get into these nooks and crannies and shoot out in the woods. And like, you know, so like we spent a lot, it was hard cause I had to produce it all and get, you know, and, and get it and make everyone happy when we're up there shooting and stuff. And like, you know, but it was a blast and I, I'm happy with how it came out. You know, I would do things differently, obviously, but I mean, I think that's how it goes. Um, and I'm, I'm happy with that. Yeah, it was a, it was a really cool, really cool experience. And yeah, to, uh, so I guess just like to, to, to circle back to your question, like cooking out with, uh, with Pat and like, you know, going through that ex early experience of like getting into uh, the video world and, and this was right at the beginning of COVID. So this when this is all, this is a, like a, the first year of COVID is when I had to make this whole thing. So it was like, 
that was like a, a challenge in itself. I remember well, the the one chapter uh, we were shooting winter in Montauk, um, and uh, when the, it was like when the hell, we were, it was like March or April, you know. But it was like cold. It was it was fucking freezing, you know. It was like <laughs> it was like zero <laughs> degrees, you know. Or like, but we had there was like some swell, so like we had to go. And we went and like, it was right when like COVID was happening. I remember like, I remember this is such like a, me and Pat were in this weird Airbnb down by like close to Ditch Plains down in Montauk. And, um, you know, and it was freezing. And uh, I remember we were thinking like, should we be out here? That's like when COVID got like real like sketchy. Like, like is this going to be like contagia? You know, like, and like, but we, we to, get, to get back into the chapter, we got the, uh, it's one of like the funniest pictures in the book. It's it, like it burns me forever because we never got another chance to go. Or maybe we did get in there. I just suck at surfing, but like it's a full page spread <laughs> of like me just like I, I, I was like I was frozen. I just couldn't get up, and like I've lost a little weight since then. I probably could have nailed it now, but it was just like it's just like this big centerfold of me just like belly boarding a, 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 a very nice wave. <laughs> Dude, I so know just done that was it, you know, and then I just sucked for the rest of the morning, and then the waves went away, and that was it, and it was fucked. <laughs> but the food was awesome, and it's yeah. part of the story. And like, I'm almost glad, like, that's what it was to bring it back. To like, a, I didn't want. I mean, listen, I wish I was up there, fucking standing on the nose, cruising down this wave. But like, I wasn't. And like, you know, not to be like, you know, the losers' war cry, but like, it's cool to show the fuck ups too, you know. But. <laughs> Yeah, those are the bits that I think make it. Like those, that's exactly what hooked me in the kombucha video. Like I just watched your locks video a little earlier. Like I think those are the things that make it approachable. Like I live here in uh, the Norwegian Arctic. There's salmon farms everywhere. There's salmon's like the fish of our community, besides cod. And I was th watching your videos. Like, dude, I'm gonna try to do that fermented locks like tomorrow because. It just, it's inviting, you know, it's not like, it doesn't make me feel like I need to have a, like a white jacket on. Just do it, you know, and if you get sick, don't sue me. I don't want to hear it. Do your own <laughs> research, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I, I, so like, so, that's where I'm at. Like, you know, it's just like, I like to experiment. I look online like everyone else. I go on fucking Google and I find ratios. I have a little notebook. I got to get more dialed in. You know, I've been a little lazy. I got some new shows coming out uh, next year. I'm going to make my own YouTube shows and, uh, from there, yeah, I think we'll be able to do some really cool. Uh, I'll, I'll get some dialed in recipes. There's so much um, childlike playfulness within it, and I and I love what you bring. You know, I love what you bring to cooking in that way. I made I made a book early in my career called The California Surf Project, where we took a 1976 Volkswagen bus and traveled from Oregon to Mexico, just surfing every coastal county in California. And I was like 21 at the time. And I just, uh, so many of the experiences, you, you know, you're trespassing, you're finding waves, you're kind of having this coming of age story. And it was so fulfilling to me because I was just like waking up with the sun, using my camera, documenting, and then going to bed. It was like the last thing I did at night was take a picture and the first thing I did in the morning. And I, I, I just, when you're speaking, I, it resonates with me, that experience and how important it is to kind of like, again, find playfulness in what you love and what you're doing. And um, I, I think it's, I think it's pretty rad. There's no real, no real question there. It was more of just a comment that it was awesome. <laughs> but like, what is the best food you've ever put in your mouth? I don't know if I have a favorite or a best. Like I'm not a big favorites. Guy, yeah. You know, like, I hate that word too. Like it's but, all, I, yeah. It's like, it's terrible. So like, it's, you know, I guess like recently, so I find memorable. What, what's, memorable. What, what's fresh on, what's fresh on my mind. And it was, it's just so, it was, it's so good. I still have it. It's like 20 yards away is, um, is I made this ice cream with strawberries and a little bit of vanilla and uh, and then I did it in like a light chocolate base. Um, oh, sorry. In a light, oh shit, sorry. In a, uh, in a in a light chocolate base, and it um it, it tasted just like like strawberry uh, chocolate covered strawberries, and uh, it, it it's just it's unbelievable. And I put a little bit of uh, cacao nibs and just like in a whole quart and a half, I put like fifteen chocolate chips. You know, like. I, ain't, I, I can't do that Ben and Jerry stuff where it's like candy bars everywhere. Like <laughs> ice cream is so good. Every now and then I just want a little speckle. But, you know, to each their own. Usually I just go plain. Is there anything that you, you eat like all, quite a bit where you're like it's hard for you not to just consume the entire thing, lick the plate sort of thing? Is there like a favorite? Uh, yeah, I mean seafood's always a good one. I mean – 
I'm really like I'm having. I'm gonna make steak frites tonight with some salad, just because I'm craving it. I'm gonna I'm gonna eat the whole thing. Like, I'm stoked <laughs> about that, you know. Like so, like today, that's like my favorite thing: steak frites with a little salad, nice little salad. And are you are you hunting and fishing uh, in in Rhodey? Is that something that you get to do? I mean, obviously fishing, but is there a lot of hunting out there? Yeah, a lot of deer hunting, a lot of duck hunting, a lot of turkey hunting. Uh, a lot of small game. There's some spot, some some pheasant spots as well, uh, and then the fishing's just world class, man. So really, is it stripers and blues? Like, wow. Oh man, no, I mean, everything. Tuna. You go offshore, you swordfish, mahi mahi. We're shooting with the spear guns and stuff. No it's way. Amazing. Off roadie and then inshore. It's all. Yeah, you know, and then and then and then in you know inshore. It's you know striped bass were in, in absolutely bonkers this year. Uh, and then black sea bass and tog and uh, I mean the sharks are everywhere and you hate sharks. It's, yeah, it's <laughs> I don't know. I love sharks. Oh, okay, but you're, I love sharks. You yeah, I, just, sharks earlier. I just don't want to be in that murky water around some rocks and then look around and all of a sudden there's a fucking fifteen foot great white shark or something, you know, like or you know a sixteen foot dresher that's just cruising by. Because like the other day we were oh man, <laughs> and like you'll probably be fine, but like you know I look like a a fucking injured seal out there <laughs> flopping around, you know, like, like I can be graceful, but for the most part, you know, I don't, you know, whatever, but like they're probably, you'll probably be all right. But like I was diving into these mackerel the other day, right offshore, right, 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 right uh, off the beach, you know, probably like 15 feet of water. And like the, I, uh, not too long ago, these guys were catching big thresher sharks in there too. So one kind of like closing question, you know, one of the things, and I, I don't know, Chris, you probably have a point of view on this as well, but, when, when you mingle your passions with your employment, like your vocations, your avocation, the things that you do for work and the things you do for pleasure, there can be these kind of blurred lines where there's a tension, right? There's a tension between the thing that makes you money and income. There's the tension with the thing that fills you up and, and, and brings so much joy to your life. How do you balance that? How do you, yeah, maybe keep, keep something sacred and out of work or... Like what's, what's the approach there? Yeah, I guess what's, what's, what's been great for me is that I'm kind of, I'm not just like a, a baking show. Like I like to do all types of stuff and like, I guess it kind of keeps, keeps it, you know, keeps it kind of fresh, you know, it kind of keeps it, you know, um, and it's stuff that like I'm kind of doing for hobbies and pleasure and adventure in my life. So like to be able to kind of just document that like the freaking Truman show or something like in a way like it's kind of like yeah it's it's it's, it's nice man it's, it's, a, it's a weird world we live in and for better or worse you know it's like I I, I think it's it's pretty cool and so be, like, taking that transition and trying to be able to you know work in like I said I got a couple other things with some other brands and some ideas going on but just focusing on my own YouTube stuff you know uh, it should be a it, it should be a pretty cool uh, uh, concept yeah I love it, man. Brad, you're you're a gem, and I and I your playfulness and your approach is something that I that inspires me, to be honest. And um, I think I'd probably be more uh, experimental in the kitchen if I wasn't cooking for uh, young children most of the time. <laughs> but um, this it oh, makes just cook them, yeah. just cook. Well, it. I, my dream is just I want to I want to get out with you sometime and and just see you do your thing, and I'll bring my camera and Let's... maybe we'll get in the river somewhere or in the ocean or. Or maybe we'll get attacked by a shark. I don't know. It'll be epic either way. But uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I uh, no heck no, man. Yeah, let's. I I love that idea. And like, man, I've been a fan of your stuff for a while, man. So let's definitely make that happen. And uh, open door up here, or you know, whatever. I'm willing to travel. Let's do some. Let's do some fun. Let's stuff. meet up in let's Iceland with Charles. We all go Deal. and we make some killer food and we surf some really fun waves. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm down. Yeah. Yeah. That was awesome. Times. Right on, boys. Thanks, buddy. Well, yeah. um, well heck yeah. N nice meeting you guys, and until uh, uh, next time. That was a great conversation. And, um, Charles, it was really cool to uh, see you kind of pick and pry at some of the more intimate aspects kind of that, that make up, I guess, his DNA. I think we established the fact pretty well that, like, he has got a just F it, you know, attitude towards, like, cooking. The rest of it is about experimenting it's about trying like that was so that stoked me out i loved that and i think brad's one of those people that really champions this like yeah send it like that's yeah. how that's that's how i got to where i am you just send it yeah. and there's really like what other way is there
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and just his, uh, his ability to like adapt, that's a cool mindset. That's a, that's a mindset that I took from this where I was like, yeah, like follow that open path that's in front of you, see where it goes. Hey, you can always kind of turn back, no worries. Um, but that's a really cool concept that I really enjoyed. I feel like if I was going to write a book called green lights, it'd be like green lights with the option, to take a U-turn, <laughs> you know? Cause yeah, that's so, yeah, yeah. I mean, when, when we were talking about selling our dream house and moving to Norway from Montana, yeah. people were so hung up on like, you're doing this thing. And I was like, yeah, but we can always go back. It's not like, you're like, dude, like, I'm, I'm like just 30 like years old. Give me a break. Like my <laughs> yeah. life isn't over. Yeah. It, it is funny how people kind of, people kind of think like that. He, he mentioned that too. He's like, he's like, I'm not the chef that's like, you know, he obviously hates the word chef, but yeah, I'm not the chef that's like the very best at this one thing. I'm not the baker. I'm just like the guy who's like good at 10 things. And I, and I, I love that. Like he's a Swiss army knife. Well, and one other thing too, that, you know, that he's, that he said, and he has said in other interviews I've, I've, I've read of his is you want to be the guy that people want to be around or the gal, you want to be the person people want to be around. And I think that that's so intuitive and so basic, but it's kind of like beaten out of us is not the right word, but it's kind of like pushed out of us. I think when we're young, there, people get so focused on credentials and what's on the paper, what's on the CV, what's on the resume. But ultimately when you're working with somebody in the workplace, you want them just to be a nice person who's fun, inspiring is a great quality, easy going is a great quality, but like just a good person to be around. And I think he really has done a good job of showcasing that. Like, hey, this is me. I'm a fun guy. Let's hang out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. He's like, he's like, Brad is always on. He's like, this is just the one, the one level, you know, the one riff you get. And um, you know, it, it kind of reminds me of a bit uh, in my career, in my life, you know, there's been times where like I've made sure the job's gotten done at the risk of not being friends with everybody. And, and that's, you know, there are times when the client really appreciates that. There are times where it's come to bite me in the ass because, you know, so-and-so person maybe doesn't want to work with me again. And it's, 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 these are growing pains. These things take time to learn. And I can only relate it to like his experience too, where he's like, you know, I, I just want to be the person that people want to work with, like have a positive attitude. People have wanted to fire him, but they didn't, you know? And, and I think that his, um, his childlike wonderment and just excitement in general kind of is hard to hate on. You know what I mean? Uh, I'd love to get your take on it, but that's the one that, you, as you mentioned, we lose. We lose that curiosity. And I'm, I'm probably the worst at it because like when I get into my kitchen, I'm like, yeah, here's the 10 things I'm going to eat. I'm not going to be curious. I'm not going to be, I'm just like, whatever, this is going to agree with me. You know, um, in some ways you almost like lose that, um, excitement around food in some way, you know, until I'm like eating with a chef like Brad. Um, but I love the be curious <laughs> part because, um, because it, it, it reminds me that that every day, like I should do something that, that feeds my curiosity, drive down that random road, take that random trail, um, you know, read this, you know, passage out of this book, just something that like, I don't know, like, like takes me back to that mindset of, of being a kid again, seeing something for the first time. Well, you know what, kids do that I think adults do less of is accept the fact that it feels uncomfortable, weird, funny, different to be bad at something, but that's okay. A recent example for me was I was at our uh, friend's house. They have two little kids, uh, six and eight, I want to say. Yeah. And they're teaching me Norwegian and they thought it was so cool to watch me struggle. And they're pointing at all the different things on the table, a foot, dog, whatever but me struggling felt really safe around them because they're yeah. kids, but yeah. to be horrible at something in front of adults, you feel like you're being judged. You feel like you're being, uh, questioned, you know, there's like this level of uncomfortability wow. that comes into it. But I think when you're with kids, it's just part of the program. Cause you're only eight years old. You haven't done that much. And so failure is just like part of exploring. And I think to remind people and also to, as a friend, as a father, as a, partner to create space where the people around you can fail and and have it be a fun experience i think that's kind of one of the one of the things that i've tried to work on myself that's the other side of the coin that's a really that's a really good insight because i think sometimes we're so focused on like allowing ourselves to foster new experiences new growth we kind of forget about the fact that we're also here to foster those for other people 
and creating safe environments for them to do that is, is crucial. Well, dude, that was a rad combo. Thanks for your time. Love you, buddy. I hope we get to uh, catch up super soon. And, and I'm, I'm just keep, keep texting me photos of the Northern Lights when you see them. And <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll be back in the Arctic soon. My, my, my blood's boiling over here in California where it's like 105 degrees in a heat wave. Dude, and, um, yeah. yeah, man. Thanks again, Charles.